What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. I'm very excited for today's episode and we're going to be looking at a watch that a lot of you have requested me to review. Um, and yeah, it's weird that I haven't mentioned it on my channel very much, um, but hear me out, okay? I figured it would be very fitting to pick up one of these watches and talk about it today, especially because I just recently reviewed literally one of Casio's most recent releases, the G-Shock GBDH 1001. If you want to take a look at this review, this crazy watch click up here and watch it because uh, yeah this is like the peak of G-Shock technology I'm very excited about it but yeah I, you know reviewing G-Shocks it's nothing new on this channel I've mentioned numerous G-Shocks and how I love them I've mentioned their hits and their misses throughout the years um, just crazy tough functional watches but it wouldn't be fair to mention all these high-tech, fancy, schmancy, newfangled G-Shocks without mentioning where they came from. That's right, in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at perhaps one of the most prolific digital watches of all time, the Casio F91W. It's 9.53 a.m. Let's get down to business. Alright guys, so as I said in the intro, nowadays Casio is seen as a company that makes watches like this, you know, big, chunky, futuristic, very technologically advanced, but it would be a shame to overlook their roots. You see, Casio, a Japanese company, was officially founded in 1946, and according to their Wikipedia page, they introduced the world's first electronic compact calculator in 1957. And guys, check it out. All you have to do is spend a few seconds on that Wikipedia page. Just scroll through it. You'll see everything Casio's introduced throughout the years. It's just crazy. And guys, I think a lot of you will understand when I say Casio has almost their own aesthetic, right? Blocky, vintage, retro technology. They've always actually been very futuristic. It's just this weird trigger that when you see an old Casio product, it just involuntarily floods your mind with nostalgia. You all know what I'm talking about. Guys, even Casio's building looks very Casio. And again, I don't really know how to describe what I'm feeling, but you know when you see a Casio product, it's just... Nintendo's, Dunkaroos, Casio. But guys, that's not a bad thing. In fact, I am very proud to say I currently own a very large piece of Casio's orological history and just orological history as a whole. Again, one of the most prolific digital watches ever is here in the office today. So let's go ahead and spend a few more moments getting up close and personal with the Casio F91W, a watch a lot of you guys own. Perhaps it was your first ever wristwatch and uh, yeah, just a very special piece of history. So let's go see what it's all about. All right, guys. Well, as we look at my little display of nostalgia here, I have to share with you a very special digital watch. Uh, now, it might not be as technologically advanced as this G-Shock I'm wearing, but we probably would not have this G-Shock without the watch in this box. Now, you'll see it is a Casio, a very special Casio. Let's open up this box and take a look. You will notice, okay, here, it says F91WM 3ACF. Now, if you want an F91, you'll spend about $10 online, but if money is no object, if you want to splurge, if you're just rolling in the dough, you can spend seven more dollars and get a green one. And Olive Drab just happens to be my favorite color right now, so I spent 17 bucks on this F91WM, blah, 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 whatever they want to call it. It's just a basic F91W, but again, in green. I think it looks really cool. Let's go ahead, zoom in, take a closer look. Man, just take a look at this Casio F91W. You know, that whole Casio aesthetic I was trying to describe earlier in the episode is summed up perfectly just by admiring this little digital watch. You know, it's kind of blocky, maybe a little bit bland, but absolutely futuristic at the same time. This weird duality between kind of old, but kind of new. It's the definition of retro, I suppose. It's just crazy, but this watch brings me back immediately to playing my Game Boy underneath my covers with a flashlight, uh, pretending I was asleep every time my mom would check up on me. It reminds me of playing with my various Ninja Turtle toys. It reminds me of playing Super Nintendo back in the 90s. Thumbs up for Chrono Trigger, by the way. This is probably one of the best video games ever. Um, yeah, an amazing game. But when we talk about Casio, we cannot overlook 
the roots that are the Casio F91Ws out there. And again, this variant, uh, what do they call it? The F91WM3ACF. It's a little bit more expensive than the black iteration. This one is about $17 and some change online right now at the time of filming. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. Uh, but yeah, just a really cool, fun looking watch. And boy, is it different than something like this. Wow, let's talk about its features. All right, so as we inspect this watch further, we notice its main selling point uh, at the time of release, which was around 1991, was the alarm function, the chronograph function, and its water resistance rating. That's right, it being water resistant uh, was very kind of special at the time, right? There weren't a bunch of watches that you could go ahead, throw on the wrist, and not really worry about, but this, for being a digital watch, it was a big deal, and uh, yeah, this does not not have the 200 meter water resistance rating that we find with most G-Shocks. This has about a 50 meter water resistance rating, but I know people that swim with this all the time and have zero issues. Now, inevitably, there will be the people in the comment section being like, oh, well, when was the last time you swam uh, past 50 meters? Well, water resistance rating, um, it doesn't directly equate to distance as far as swimming down past 50 meters, it has to do with pressure. So guys, a lot of dress watches uh, have 30 meter water resistance rating, but but even if you get it wet you know, in your faucet, they will be ruined. So don't take water resistance ratings concretely. Uh, it doesn't really have to do with the distance you swim. It has to do uh, with pressures and kind of weird things like that. So if your watch has a 30 meter water resistance rating, doesn't mean it can survive 30 meters of water. I just wanna say that right now, a little bit of a disclaimer. But this watch, with its 50 meter water resistance rating, I know people that swim with it all the time, and again, they have no issues whatsoever, but it is a far cry from something like a G-Shock. We've been spoiled nowadays. All right, so as we inspect this watch further, you'll notice this case has three buttons. One, two, and three. So first, I wanna take a look at the top left button. It says light. Well, you're not gonna see anything right now because the room is currently very well lit. Uh, we're gonna get a better low light shot for you, but as we press it, we can see this cute little green light right there. It is a far cry from most modern G-Shocks, very vibrant backlights, uh, but for back then, you know, this was very impressive and it definitely gets the job done, kind of, but it's not something, uh, you know, to write home about. It's just this little boop. Very, very cute. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this button, the mode button, because this is really uh, the meat and potatoes right here. Um, as we can see, very, very robust beeping sound. Yeah, that's very pleasant, but as we hit it, there aren't a ton of features. You're not gonna get those 38 time zones or the 38 cities, I should say. You're not going to get um, a ton of multi-alarms or the auto calendars. You're not really gonna get that with this watch. But you can see, we do have a chronograph. So what's funny about this chronograph that I've noticed is you press, uh, you start, you start it, excuse me, with this button, then you'll stop it with the same button, but you utilize the light button to clear it, which is very cool. A lot of G-Shocks nowadays, the light button simply actuates the light. It doesn't really do anything. I know there are some other G-Shocks uh, that have redundancy with the buttons, but uh, it's very cool to see how simple this is. You start it, you stop it, and then you clear it uh, with the light button. I thought that was very nice. And of course, you get your alarms that was a big selling point for this watch. You had alarms you could use. We're gonna go ahead and set the time on this watch right now because it is not Saturday, it is currently Monday, June 1st. And uh, yeah, let's go get this all properly set and we'll talk a little bit more about how it feels on the wrist. All right, so we have set the time and again, very simple process. Essentially what you do, you cycle through this very limited menu and then you'll notice uh, the numbers flashing and you will use the light button to go ahead and cycle through uh, the various pieces of information that you need to set. But it is incredibly easy, incredibly simple, and again, kind of quirky and cute and just a sign of the times, right? This was the 1990s, late 80s, early 90s, very simple, got the job done. Um, man, very fun to use and again, G-Shocks nowadays, they're not super difficult to set, but it is much more of a process than something like this. And honestly, guys, playing with this watch right now, setting this watch, seeing what it does, 
it's kind of refreshing, kind of a breath of fresh air. Not much to do, not much to go wrong, and simple and fun. So as we take a look at this watch's case back, not a whole lot going on, says what the watch is. Stainless steel back, water resistant. Uh, now out of the box, there are some scratches and scuffs on the case back. Doesn't really bother me because again, this was a $17 watch under $20. Um, I'm not really gonna complain. Looks very old school uh, as far as the little screws on the case back and just the overall design. Again, kind of thin resin straps here. Um, doesn't seem to be terribly uncomfortable. Let's go ahead and put it on the wrist. All in all, um, I really, really like it as far as it just being a blast from the past. Actually, you know what? Before we put it on the wrist, let's break out the calipers and measure the dang thing. Yeah, let's do that. All right, guys, it is time to officially make this a T3 watch review. You know, it wouldn't be one without breaking out the caliper tool. So let's go ahead, take a look at this first measurement, excluding any of the buttons. This watch is 33.1 millimeters across. Now let's take a look at the lug to lug. Um, at the widest point, lug to lug, 37.9 millimeters. Now let's take a look at how thick, or I should say thin, this watch is, because it seems to be a very thin digital watch. Yep, 8.5 millimeters thin, absolutely crazy. Now one thing I'm noticing right now, which is very, very cool, uh, seems to me you can push these pins out, drilled lugs, guys. Let's go ahead and get you in focus here. Uh, this watch does in fact have uh, drilled lugs. My camera will pick it up, there you go. And uh, there are arrows telling you which way to push them out. So it looks like you could replace these straps for perhaps a single piece NATO or uh, some form of nylon strap. Uh, looks to be very, very doable. Let's go ahead and see if we can measure uh, the lug width. 18.9 millimeter lug width, so that's about a 19 millimeter lug width. Um, yeah, that's very doable, guys. So it looks like if you don't want these kind of thin resin straps, or maybe, uh, you know, these have been known to kind of crack and crumble over time, you can go ahead, punch out those pins, and replace it with some new ones of your choice. That's very, very cool. All right, guys, well, for the first time ever on the Time Teller channel, I'm wearing a Casio F91W on the wrist. Now, guys, we probably would not have digital watches as we know them without the popularity of this little Casio. And I'm definitely saying little Casio because when I when I typically wear a G-Shock, I know I'm wearing something on the wrist, but this thing, it it I could easily forget that there's a watch on my wrist. I'm not just saying that. This feels a whole lot like my Cartier tank. And just like my tank, this could probably slide under a cuff, no problem. Not that I recommend that. I don't really think this is a dress watch, but hey, there's no rules. So if you wanna wear this with a dress shirt, yeah, this could definitely slide under the cuff. But here's where I think this really shines, okay? If you wanna wear a watch that you don't really have to worry about, but you need to be wearing a watch, like let's say you need a timer, let's say you need to be able to tell the time, but you don't wanna be wearing something that is big and clunky and you don't wanna be wearing something that's super duper expensive. Maybe you need something that's borderline disposable. And I know that sounds harsh, but honestly, it's a compliment. This could be a great watch for you. Guys, it's very inexpensive. It is very wearable. Heck, I have seven and a half inch wrists. If you have smaller wrists than me, this is very much easily wearable. Uh, or <laughs> this is very, accommodating, that's the word I was looking for. This is very accommodating in comparison to a G-Shock. And uh, man, is it a good purchase. I'm going to recommend this watch simply because for under $20, you can get a very cool piece of orological history and a watch that you don't have to worry about. So guys, it's true, you know, the review of this Casio F91 isn't going to be as in-depth as it would be with one of these newer G-Shocks with a ton of different features and attributes and functions, but the truth is, these watches do have some similarities. Yes, of course, they were made decades apart. Yes, of course, this G-Shock here on the right has a lot more functionality, but we have to recognize we can't have one without the other. So special thanks to this Casio F91. We couldn't have all the very cool G-Shocks that we know and love today without you. And uh, yeah, is this an awesome piece of orological memorabilia? I love it. 
All right, guys, well, there you have it. The very, very special Casio F91 digital watch, a watch that a lot of us have had throughout the years and a very special piece. So guys, if you own one of these watches or if you have a memory of one of these watches, please leave it in the comment section below because I'd love to read about that and uh, share all of our stories together. It's just a very cool watch that I'm sure a lot of us have experience with. And guys, I just want to finish this episode with an enormous thank you because I'm very proud to say we raised just under $1,000 for NoKidHungry.org. Everyone who purchased one of my limited edition t-shirts throughout the month of May helped me out to make this possible. The Time Teller channel is going to go ahead and round up. We will be donating $1,000 to NoKidHungry.org and we could not do it without you. And guys, if you spoke to me a few years ago before I started this channel or before I started the Time Teller shop, um, I would not have been in a position to do this. So I wanna thank you so much. It's humbling. I feel truly blessed to be able to do this. And uh, $1,000 isn't small potatoes, guys. A lot of kids are gonna eat and uh, it's all thanks to you guys. So please give yourselves a pat on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a round of applause uh, because that is just crazy. $1,000 to nokidhungry.org, all thanks to you. So please wear those shirts proudly. Uh, if you purchased one, again, you made this possible and it's just crazy. I thank you so, so much. So guys, with that being said, Thank you so much. Check out the links in the description below to my Amazon affiliate store. Thank you to everyone that picked up all those watches at the Time Teller shop. We restocked and then we pretty much sold out immediately. So you guys, you guys are just crazy. New restocks coming every week. We will start uh, you know, adding more watches to the store regularly. Last month, the month of May, I wanted to focus on those t-shirts and it looks like you guys wanted to focus on those t-shirts too because again, we're able to donate $1,000 to no kid hungry. Just crazy, thank you guys. So if you're new here and you enjoyed this episode, maybe you learned something, you had a laugh, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already, it helps us out a bunch. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the content we do here. We do four pieces of content a week. Unless you're a channel member, then you'll get six pieces of content a week. That's right, $4.99 a month gets you a channel membership. It's essentially YouTube's version of Patreon. Uh, all that help comes here and we're able to pick up these watches to review. We couldn't do any of this without my channel members. Special thanks to you guys. So guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. <laughs>